Hi there, my name is Fix Fox, and welcome back to Heroes of Might and Magic 2. This is the F Heroes edition, and I'm very glad to be back streaming here on Twitch. We got an excellent scenario in the bag for us today. This is going to be Slayer's Legacy, which is a very cool map because it picks right up off with the story of Lord Slayer from Heroes of Might and Magic 1. I had to do a little bit of lore digging on this. A few people had mentioned this to me, and so I knew that we needed to do a little bit more digging. Lord Slayer was the barbarian faction leader from Heroes of Might and Magic 1, and now this single scenario kind of more or less follows through with the rest of his story after his death what happened where were her bone where was his bones buried and what happened to his children chris says pleasure to be here uh we got group in a couple minutes so you'll pop in and out no problems my man i get it life is busy and i am all for that let's dive right on in to slayer's legacy perfect thank you so if we look here this is going to be first of all a little bit intimidating for this reason Slayer's Legacy is a six player map, extra large, and it has the victory condition of we have to capture a specific town. I do believe it is the arena to the north. This is a map I have never played before, but I'm very excited to give it a shot. Um, arena to the north. I assume that that's not just the adventure map object, the arena. I assume that there is a town or castle named arena. And so we're going to have to capture that particular castle. We cannot just get wiped off the face of the map, but because there's six other players, I believe that if any of them are able to capture that specific town, that we lose the scenario. So we're going to have to be pretty on our game. We're going to have to make sure that we are tip top and getting to that top castle as quickly as possible. We have the opportunity to start either as the blue knights, the green sorceresses, the red necromancers, the yellow wizards, and then orange and purple, it looks like, are going to be playing the spoilers and they are going to be fixed at any given point. I'm going to stick with the blue knights. We have not played a good knight game in a long time, and I want to see how we do playing with the knights. With that being said, let's go to impossible difficulty, making sure that we have no starting resources, and let's just dive right in. Almost a quarter of a century ago, Lord Slayer established the Slayer Empire, which brought order to a once chaotic land. But Lord Slayer has been dead for over a decade, and his empire has begun to crumble. In his youth, Lord Slayer was a champion knight and a bastion of purity and goodness. He turned icy Lambeau Mountains into a citadel of glory, and he fell in love with a young duchess named Elizabeth. Oh, I didn't know we were getting a love story here. This is excellent. Who was your mother? Though he never returned to wed her, the Knights of Lombardy respect her so that she has always borne the name of Slayer, as have you. You grew up in the harsh mountains of Lambeau, trained by the Knights of Lombardy in a code of honor and chivalry. They never allowed you to bear the stigma of illegitimacy, and you have carried all your life the hopes of these brave warriors, the hope that you might someday rise to lead the empire after your father. Wow, there's a lot of reading here. Ugh. Now, Elizabeth Slayer has not died, Her, or she has died. Her passing could not have come at a worse time. The land is in turmoil, the empire is collapsing, bandits and rogues run free, and an evil called the Arena has arisen in the north to threaten all who live in the empire. The Knights of Lombardy have gathered their remaining numbers to mount a campaign to save the empire, and you have stepped forward to lead them. You have dreams and plans, mounted cavalry to lead the charge, and a cathedral to, char to train the elite. You take the shield of your father, raise the blue banner for your forces against impossible odds, knowing that you alone have the virtue and honor to lead the empire away from the brink of disaster and onward to glory. Oh, by the way, things are set up here where you will not need to stoop to using peasants. <laughs> we will not need to stoop to using peasants. The gods you know can't stand the stinking slack-jawed losers. <laughs> the empire is failing and only a bold new leader can restore its glory. The arena must be cast down. The people of this land will only follow the ones who bring back the bones of Lord Slayer as proof of their strength. Have you ever read The Final Empire by Brandon Sanderson? Lord Slayer sounds like a character out of that book. I have not read that book before. The Final Empire by Brian Sanderson. I've not read that book. I'd be very interested to read. I like high fantasy types of books, which is interesting because I found the other day, interesting that we don't start off with a thatched hut. Uh, I read the other day somebody's analysis on the Lord of the Rings, which was comparable to Heroes of Might and Magic, and they more or less, I don't want to say they came out at the same time, but there was some, some degree of popularity that the Lord of the Rings gained while Heroes of Might and Magic was getting off its feet. And the Lord of the Rings is actually not high fantasy. They are trudging through the remains of what was wonderful ancient civilizations. 
And so to call it high fantasy, you know, not so much, but I like, for example, Lord of the Rings. Um, I like the kind of desolate after aftermath that the elves had to face of seeing Middle Earth just obliterated. And so I'm very interested in any kind of high fantasy book always. If if the final empire is sort of that type of book, high fantasy or otherwise, what kind of book is it? Is it high fantasy or is it something else, would you say? Um, we start off, by the way, with Erica Slayer the Knight, level three. We have a great army to start off with here. We have the advanced ballistics, basic leadership and the basic wisdom. The fact that we start off with a spell book and the basic leadership or the basic wisdom is so very nice because then we know that as a knight, we're not going to be hamstringed by one of the possible bad things that could happen. If you don't have access to magic, you're always going to be at a little bit of a disadvantage. So having that wisdom there helps out a lot. And we also have the stealth shield of protection for the plus two. This army is pretty darn good. We should be able to fight our way through most of these forces. Um, this observation tower is terrific. We do see Freeman, which is a night town. We do see a sulfur mine, a gem mine. We do have a Freeman's foundry, so we may never have to upgrade our pikemen and our master swordsmen. That can save us a lot of gold. That's excellent. Or mine here. So along with the sawmill to the east, I think that we're going to want to pick up our ore and our wood as quickly as possible because we know, we absolutely know that the knights require a tremendous amount of wood. They require a tremendous amount of ore. So rather than head to the north, even though we can take Freeman, I say that we head to the east. Again, because we're on impossible difficulty, we start off with no resources. We have nothing but nine wood, ten ore. Is that enough to get anything? Not really. Not really. I'm going to forego the blacksmith and the jousting arena for now. I'm just going to go straight for the statue. Let's get some long term resources. Um, the gold generation is going to be very, very useful. And then we're going to figure out what dwellings we need to move forward. I'd say it's more of a Game of Thrones like there are no elves, dwarves or stuff like that. OK, yeah. Game of Thrones. I, I, I'm I familiar with that reference. Uh, how familiar I am with it? Not very much, but I, I at least get Game of Thrones in that style of medieval, but also kind of newer elements. Uh, without the high fantasy of elves and dwarves and things like that. Reports come in from all over. You have three siblings, all of whom are making a claim to the throne. The dread pirate Roberts has been seen roaming the seas. The greatest initial danger to your efforts will no doubt come by sea. Okay. We didn't actually stop in at our castle here. There is a mage guild. I should have probably stopped in there. By the way, we just picked up the statue. We already have the well. We actually already have a shipyard, interestingly enough, and we do have left turret, right turret. And then as far as dwellings, we do have our rangers, our pikemen and our swordsmen. No peasants, of course. Uh, so pretty interesting start here. I wonder if given that information with the Dread Pirate Roberts, if it's going to be useful for us to get a ship sooner rather than later, we're going to have to wait and find out. But for now, we don't even have really enough gold to do more than just uh, adventure forth with this one hero of ours. The peasants want to run. We're not going to let them. They are free experience. If they wanted to join me, I would say no, sir. I'm not going to allow it. Uh, we're going to head in this direction again, continuing east. Any purchases that we can make at this time, I agree. We're not going to get the thatched hut. Marketplace. We're going to wait. We're going to save all of our resources for now. I think my favorite high fantasy series has to be The Magician by Raymond E. Feist. I, I'd be interested in reading that. I don't think I've ever heard of that. Is he, because I know that you, Chris, are over in the UK. Is he a British author? Is he, do we know where he's from? Um, unfortunately, I... I feel like I need to be more well read. There's a lot of books that I love very, very much, um, but unfortunately I, I need to continue to read at all times. And so I'm looking for recommendations is kind of what I'm saying there. But is he is he a UK artist? Is he or author? Is he somewhere else? I don't know. Word has it that the Dread Pirate Roberts has been seen traveling with centaurs and genie and his motley band. That seems patently ludicrous to you. Those beings are just myths just like dragons. That is wonderful storytelling there. It seems patently ludicrous because just like dragons, they're myths. I love this kind of, you know, this sets the scene. This does some great world building, some great storytelling in a way that I appreciate so very, very much. There's something terrific about being able to say, I don't believe in those kind of things. And then hopefully sooner rather than later, we're going to come across some of these mythical creatures and we're just going to know that we've messed up. We done messed up AA Ron. We're going to for sure get the Jousting Arena. I think more than getting another hero, I think that another Jousting Arena or getting the Jousting Arena is going to be important. I do wonder if that was a mistake or not, knowing that we have so many resources to the north we can get. Suffice to say, we're going to get another hero on day one tomorrow. That's what we're going to do. No Californian. He's from the U.S. Okay. Okay. I, I am always very interested in 
authors in their like where they come from and how that impacts their writing there was a class i took once upon a time in college and it was specifically talking about authors and their general background and how that influenced their writing and i'm grateful that there's people out there who have done a lot of studying to figure out what their backgrounds were so that way i can i can understand more um of course you can only write about the things you know about and so the background that anybody might have is always going to be pretty important but figuring out what those elements were goes a long long way in helping me always be invested in their story i'm going to pick up two crystal there we're going to be able to pick up some more uh, probably picking up archers and archers waiting here and we'll just circle our way back on our way back out here uh, since it is day seven we're going to have more crystal in just one moment so wilfrey has a choice he can reach this windmill now and then we can double dip on the resources knowing that i don't see any other mercury or well we got gems sulfur here um, i'm just going to hope that a little bit of resources might help me get up to future levels of mage guilds uh, two gems is never a bad thing and let's pick up the ore and these resources before we head back. I did miss these pikemen here. I didn't mention or I didn't see these pikemen that were guarding this artifact. It was hidden well enough in the trees. And so we're going to probably want to bring to bear our forces to the Freeman's Foundry in not too long. I have a soft spot for fantasy. My late dad said I'd grow out of it reading that kind of stuff, but I never did. Haha. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I appreciate that very, very much. Uh, dad, it's not a phase. I... I think that there's something wonderful about uh, being able to say that, you know what, I like what I like. And I, I saw something the other day that said that uh, people that will try and put people down for their likes and dislikes, um, you know, ouch, man. Hey, I'm just trying to enjoy myself and trying to have a good time. Uh, if if I didn't spend the time to enjoy Heroes of Might and Magic, or if somebody told me, oh, it's too childish, you should stop playing this game, we wouldn't get the opportunity to be here. And that'd be really, really sad. So. Uh, I'm glad that I've never grown out of some of my things that I've enjoyed. Probably the number one thing is music. I am this guy who is, to this day, still listening to some of the same music I started listening to in high school. And for better or for worse, it is what it is. <laughs> I I just love things like, I don't know, Sum 41, Green Day, Linkin Park. They were the hot bands at the time. They kind of hit that that tone for me as a young person and I just never really grew out of it and you know should I get some some better taste in music that's the point is that it's what I like and I'm not gonna I, I can't apologize for it so I'm glad that you still have your soft spot for fantasy hopefully you get to continue to read some new fantasy books that come out unfortunately when there's so many good fantasy books already in place it can be hard for new authors to really fill that role because bookstores are going to have the classics there and I hope that we're able to find some new books, some new fantasy uh, books coming out as they come out. Deep in the woods, you come to the dwelling of Sir Vince, one of the legends of your land. I once served your father, Erica, he says. Now I am too old to do much but advise and to gladly give you what little I have. Down this road, though, there are some warriors who would be honored to join your, you in a great cause. Down this road. Oh, that's got to be the it's got to be the archers. It's got to be the archers. And we missed this the first time because we took one step out of our way to go to the gazebo. So that's what happened there. Uh, I have I have to pop away. Yep. Take good care, Chris. Happy to see you all the time. Zents, good good evening to you, sir. Happy to have you on. Zents, uh, by the way, I appreciate so very, very much. The map editor is tip top. I know that the map editor has been one of you as the F Heroes 2 team members. It's been one of your priorities. And I got to tell you, it's been so fun to play around with Zents. I, I've been creating some, some really fun maps. I'm waiting on a couple of the other features that are going to come out. I was waiting specifically on what we got in 1.1.1, which was the ability to put some strategic victory conditions in place. And it's been, a, it's been a ton of fun. So I've really, really appreciated the map editor. So good job. If anybody doesn't know, Zens is one of the F Heroes 2 team members. He does a great job. Um, very supportive of all people playing Heroes of Might and Magic. And I'm just a big fan of him. So, yep, I appreciate you very much, sir. Glad to have you here. Thank you so much. To my child, who will one day view this obelisk, I have traveled from this noble land of Lambeau because I believe that there is a limit to what, I, what can be achieved with the sword. The code of honor, which gives these knights strength, also limits the extent of what they can achieve. There must be more if I am to truly unify this land, Lord Slayer. 
It's really interesting to see that, that Lord Slayer is saying that, hey, I was this tough and rumble kind of knight barbarian type of person. And yet I know that there's more than just that. So are we going to have a diplomacy battle here at some point? I don't know. We're going to have to wait and find out. So uh, that sign there, I got it. I have to step on this sign to see what's here. The road east leads to Freeman. I haven't personally done the work on the editor, but I did some QA for it. Yep, I dig that. I dig that. Let's see. Heading back over here. So, folks, we have three heroes at this point. I know I've been talking more than explaining what I've been playing, but I've still been playing this whole time. I think that what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get Ambrose to the Freeman's Foundry so we can get some Master Swordsman into Erica's army as she goes up and takes Freeman. And then Wilfrey just has his two boars, and he's going to do some basic scouting for us. I don't know if we should go north or if we should go east with him, but I'm excited to see what the road may bring. If we can ideally get up to the cathedral sooner rather than later, 20 wood, 20 crystal, we're going to be in good space, in good shape. It looks like there's crystal here. Let's plan on getting over there as soon as possible. So uh, Wilfrey's going to go trying to use our movement points as best as possible using the left, right, up, down, as opposed to a diagonal. And there is so much crystal here, plus the crystal mine. Is this going to be enough to get what we need? It might be. This really might be enough for us. Let's have Erica. I think she can defeat Freeman without these additional troops. Yep, no problem. 731 experience. And so she's level four already. Again, I didn't mention this, but three attack, five defense. She's a really tough hero, and these armies are fantastic. Oh, very interesting. So we do have archers here, pikemen, swordsmen. This is really a little bit concerning. <laughs> Let me tell you why this is concerning. Whenever I see armies like this, I worry that if I have such a good, fast start, what does the enemy have? Because I assume that all four factions are playable from all four positions, right? I assume that if I picked red or blue or yellow or green, I would assume that they all have a pretty even chance of winning this scenario. However, the concern is, is that if I have such a good start, then surely the sorceresses, surely the knights, they all have an even better start ahead of us. So little concerned about that. Um, we're going to do something a little bit nifty here. We're going to pick up the archers. We're going to want all 48 of these archers to turn into rangers. We're also going to want to upgrade these swordsmen and such. So we're going to purchase what we can here. We are officially out of gold and we're going to do a little bit of a swap here. And so then the unupgraded troops are all going to go on to Ambrose. Ambrose is going to probably meet us up here as Erica travels by road. Pulling these troops back into the army. And then, since we can cut through here, Ambrose is just going to slowly make the trek. And after he's done so, he's probably going to go back and pick up as many of those archers and turn them into rangers as he can. Um, this is one of those times where the logistics really matter so, so much. And so we're going to have to wait and see just how well or poorly it turns out. More wood, which is very useful. We're to the point where, folks, we have 31 wood and we have 20 crystal. We can pick up the cathedral pretty soon. I'm going to assume that we're going to pick up enough wood here to make up for the cost of a boat. I think that sooner rather than later, we're going to pick up both the cathedral and a hero and a boat. That's going to be 8,500 gold that we're going to need before day seven or by the end of day seven. So uh, let's plan on getting that as soon as possible. What opportunities do we have for gold? We got stuff here, maybe some stuff up here. Let's get our advanced scouts further down the road. Let's just see what we can find. Okay, so Erica Slayer is locked and loaded, ready to go. I don't think we stepped on the sign we did. The road east leads to Freeman. That's this town here we've taken. Erica is heading north. Wilfrey is picking up what he can. And we now also have a town of Whitefield. Very interesting that Whitefield actually has barbarian defenders in it. I think that we'll plan on Erica heading straight for Whitefield, and then she can defeat this graveyard on the way out as well. Um, the graveyard's actually probably a pretty easy fight because of these three crusaders. Doing double damage to zombies is going to be a nice pickup. That shouldn't be any problems. As much as I really want this artifact for the plus morale, I don't think I really need it. I think that might morale is going to be okay, regardless of what we do here. So let's have Ambrose head up north. Maybe I can save 2,500 gold and have Ambrose actually be the one to go into the ocean. We'll see. There's lots of logistical choices that we can make right now, and, and I don't have a very clear path forward. We're just kind of seeing what we can find as things go on. Uh, 
veteran pikemen more than anything more than the 54 archers i do want to upgrade those to rangers as soon as possible that's gonna be 5300 gold actually would you rather have 53 archers or six pikemen i think you'd rather have the archers even though upgrading them is going to be pretty tough maybe we can upgrade one of these towns get a castle and then turn those into rangers without going all the way back 5300 gold is just too much gold to have to deal with so we're gonna ignore that for now we will ignore that for now i, I want to get these pikemen i want to get these wolves i think that wilfrey is going to just take two steps forward just to see if there's anything else over here there is something the captain of the guard sir reginald greets you we shall fly the flag of Erica Slayer, but only if you show us you know how to fight our enemies. We have been staving off the advance of a small barbarian force. Deal with them and we shall join your cause. Nice thematic storytelling. Why there's barbarians in there, that's why. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna do something like this. Here's what I'm gonna do. Zens is back. The ancient lone tree besides the road reminds you of a tale you heard of Lord Slayer's travels. Perhaps there is something he left behind in these woods. Oh my gosh. Do you know what that means? Maybe there's something that Lord Slayer left in, like behind in these woods. That means I have to step in all of these weird little enclaves to see if I can find his extra special stuff. Maybe there's an event bubble that if you don't step on it, you're not going to find whatever. And that's a little sad because that's going to take a lot of time. It's going to take a lot of time. We are going to, we're going to do it like this. We're going to transfer over all these troops and we're just going to let Wilfrey kill these creatures, give the troops back, and we're gonna be as effective with our troops as possible, specifically with our movement points. That's what we're really gonna be going for. Let's pick up this sign, because it's on our way. This road leads to Favre. I, I, saw, I call it Favre, but I think it's actually Favre. I don't know. We've, we've seen Lambo, and we've seen Favre. I'm wondering if the person that made this map is a Green Bay Packers fan, Green Bay Packers being the American football team. Um, Lambeau Field is where the Green Bay Packers play, and then Brett Favre was one of their all-time greatest quarterbacks up there with people like Howie Mandel. So I wonder if that is a reference to that. So this map is a reference to Lord Slayer from Heroes 1. Yeah, it absolutely is. Um, I feel bad. I, I, I wish I could go back and read some of the preamble story. Zent, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to look at that or play the map yourself. Um, go back to the earlier part of this recording or start the map yourself. It's pretty interesting. They've done a good job of laying the scene out. And I'm guessing that the text is different whether you start off as the knights or the sorceresses or the necromancers or the wizards. We had some very knight-based flavor text to start off. It looks like somebody did a great job in making this an epic adventure. No other purchases to make at this time. Again, we're really just trying to get to this cathedral. We are going to make it. The supporters contribute what they can to help you ascend to the throne. Reports from the north, the notori notorious highwayman Dennis Moore has been terrorizing the market district. Good to know. We have 6,700 gold. Before we do anything else, let's pick up this week two cathedral. That's going to be a big pickup. And the nice thing is, is that as these troops accrue, we are going to be able to uh, wait on some of these other projects that we might want to have spent some time on. Things like getting the, uh, the boat into the water. Things like um getting in maybe another hero there's there's some things that we want to do always but there's only so much time in any given some any given day 505 experience i would have loved for that to go on to erica but more importantly i just need wilfrey to get that and then go on with his day he'll pick up this artifact erica's gonna immediately go for whitefield we do so seven archers let's see if we can fight this just a little bit better but yeah, this map is in reference to Lord Slayer, and, and I don't I didn't really know the legacy of Lord Slayer. Um, I played Heroes of Might and Magic 1, but I don't know if I actually ever completed the scenario, funny enough. Like, I just, I don't know if I ever did. So, uh, or all the campaigns anyway that had Lord Slayer, him being the leader of the Barbarians. Good, good morale here. Terrific for that. Take the hit from the goblins. We do lose the one Master Swordsman. That was some poor positioning on my part. Let's attack the Orc Chiefs since they're going to go first in the turn order here. The Archer should be able to take out 10 of these Orcs here. Yep, no problems. So, been a very long time since I played Heroes 1, uh, 2. Yeah, I, I feel bad because Heroes 1 is the original. Heroes 1... Oh, Pathfinding, so good. Given that we have all this snow, we're going to take Pathfinding and be so gracious, so grateful for it. Um, Heroes 1 is the original, and I want to give homage. I want to give it its dues, uh, give it the respect that it deserves because it started the whole thing, the whole franchise. 
but it's very difficult to play Heroes of Might and Magic 1. I've gone back and I've given it a try. It's just very, very difficult. Rather than pick up any of these troops, we're going to save them all here for now. We've got bigger fish to fry. And and so again, I feel bad, but I just can't dive into it like I once did. And I'm sad, but it it doesn't hold up like Heroes of Might and Magic 2 holds up. Heroes of Might and Magic 2, especially with the F Heroes 2 additions, the quality of life buffs makes this game just as good or better than any game released in the year 2024 or 2023, in my humble opinion. And I mean that very, very much. I know I'm a fan of the strategy genre, and this plays very, very well into that strategy. Other people might prefer first person shooters or things like that, but this is my coup de grace. This is this is this is it. Bring a virtuous maiden from the clutches of an evil overlord. You are granted the Medal of Valor by the King's Herald. That's plus one morale. We are going to spend the time with Wilfrey to go pick up the windmill and some other things pretty soon. There's no way we're getting through these ghosts, but I'm, I'm keeping an eye on getting into the water here. I think that we're going to make that happen right now. We're going to pick up the boat. We're going to pick up probably Rathmont. Yeah, especially because he's got the scouting. He's going to be a pretty good hero for us. And we're actually going to give him just the one gargoyle and save the rest of the gargoyles here for other troops to go out and be fast later. If I'd had the choice between a sorceress, I might have picked the, taken the sorceress because they're going to be in the boat. But the, the scouting is going to be A-OK -okay for me. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Don't really need to go through these pikemen. The sulfur mine, we do want that at some point, but we'll pick that up when we can. Water wheel for a thousand gold. Very nice. And then Erica, I am going to have her go out of her way to go get this graveyard. It's especially an easier choice knowing that we had the pathfinding. So it's going to save us a little bit of the movement points. This is going to be a lot of zombies. I think that again, that we can fight this fight with no problems. Um, maybe we can do better. Maybe we can't. But really, it's going to come down to these crusaders just doing so much damage, not to mention these archers. Let's go into a little bit of a defensive position. And then just kind of take it away from there. Interesting, and that's very nice for me to know. So these zombies are all going to go south. They're going to go immediately for these 53 archers more than any of these other troops. That's going to make it pretty obvious to me what I ought to do. So let's just fire away. And I think that that one Master Swordsman, I think that he perished simply because he got impetuous and he probably ran across the battlefield. In just a second, knowing that he's already taken his turn, I think, I think, don't quote me on this, I think that if we hit Q, that we might win this battle with no losses whatsoever. That's what I'm hoping for. We will find out in just a moment here. Uh, we're gonna kill three to five here. The damage taken on the retaliation, not that much because we've got our high, high defense, 11 damage. Let's kill this big stack of 20. Oh yeah, that feels so good. Cutting through the undead like butter, like butter. They've got no chance against us. Let's kill big stacks where we can. And yeah, there's there's just too many hit points left here. We're just going to hit Q and in the battle from there. It is done. It is finished. I'm not going to pick up the wisdom here. So I've, I've mentioned this a couple of times in the past. Wisdom is so good to get if you think you're going to get their fourth and fifth level spells sooner rather than later. I don't think I will. And so for that reason, I'm going to take the advanced leadership as we pick up the telescope. Not the best artifact we could have gotten, but not too bad. Not too bad. It'll it'll help us out. It'll pay its dues. That is for certain. Uh, Interesting, we do see outside of our frozen domain, there is lots to be done over there. What we're going to run into, I'm not too sure, but um, I, I guess that this map, I just think that we see a little bit of maybe that's not snow. I assumed for some reason that because this was in the snowy north, that everything would be snow. Perhaps I am mistaken and happy to be mistaken where I am. Let's go get our crystal. 740 experience, the pathfinding, so big so very big i don't think that we can get to this campfire how we get there i'm not too sure and i'm so i'm so because i don't know where the event bubbles are i don't know how much time i need to spend to go pick up some of these random things or like send a hero right here for example i'm i'm gonna go back i'm gonna have wilfrey mm, i'm gonna have wilfrey be the one to really explore all of this i don't need his artifact at this moment I think I'd rather have him help me get some troops up to the front. Yeah, pretty, pretty funny how this goes with our logistics to figure out what's going to be the very best for us. We do see uh, Farve. I'm going to call it Farve from now on because that's probably the correct way of saying it. But it's a full on castle instead of a town. So we've got one, two, three, four night towns. And again, that's concerning because I can only imagine what the enemy has. 
if I start off with this, then what are they going to have? Uh, Shipwreck Survivor does have this Endless Purse of Gold. That is worth waiting around for Wilfrey. It's going to cost us basically a day, but I want Wilfrey to pick that up because I don't care if I lose Rathmont and I don't want to worry about losing him. I, I don't I don't want to worry that, oh, I, I shouldn't lose him. I shouldn't be risky with him. No, his job is to be the riskiest son of a gun you've ever seen. That's what he does best. So let's have Wilfrey go pick up that artifact. And Wilfrey's going to hang out in town overnight while Rathmont sails east into his demise, possibly. We did note earlier it had some text bubbles that indicated that there was the Dread Pirate Roberts around. That could be interesting if we run across somebody that's a little bit scary for us. Uh, worth noting, so we have our sawmill, we have our ore, we know where our sulfur is. It's back over here, uh, more to the, to the west. We do have our crystal and our gems. We're missing the mercury, we're missing the sulfur. Here is our alchemist lab, here's our sulfur mine. We have what we need. Hey, Arcane Him, how you doing, sir? Very happy to see you there. Always a fan. This map has a really cool road system. So far, this is very interesting, especially for the snow, for a hero that doesn't have pathfinding. This is very nice to see. And I, I really like the use of roads. In maps, it always tickles some part of my brain that makes me very, very happy. I think it's time that we upgrade to champions. It's going to be a little bit of an investment, but we're going to upgrade that now because it's never going to be a bad thing for us to get champions. And because I'm about to bring troops to the front, it just seems to be the very, very best thing for me. This artifact I don't really care about, and I don't really need the sulfur at this time. It's more important to me to save the movement points for later. Let's have Rathmont continue on. We do see more snow. Rather than land, we're just going to hop over in this direction. And very interesting, we do see cracked earth. This looks like a pretty well-traveled area there as well. And we do see some liths. Maybe we land and we go into the liths just to see where the liths can take us. Meanwhile, Ambrose is going to find a pack of cavalries at the end of this road. That is more than he wants to deal with, that's for sure. And then we're just going to bring up only the troops that have been upgraded or can be upgraded at the Bremen's Foundry. So, rangers... I think we're going to take the Rangers more than anything um, because there's more flexibility in how we get them to the front. So we are officially out of gold again. We may be doing ourselves a huge disservice here, and I, and I don't know about it. Here's the disservice. We have one, two towns that can be upgraded into castles. Is it, is it a, a good decision or a bad decision to spend all this gold on troops knowing that Erica is already strong enough to defeat everything we've seen so far? Would we be wiser to invest in our infrastructure, get towns and get more dwellings, archers, you know, an extra eight archers a day here, extra eight archers a day here for a week, that is? I have to say, um, we will find out later. I, when you haven't played a map, as this is for me, this is a first time playthrough. If you don't know some of these basic points of strategy, you can get yourself into a little bit of a pickle. And I'm hoping that we end up doing things the most correct on the first try. Some things are intuitive and some things are not. We will have to wait and find out. Lots of these troops here. Tell you what, okay. I hope, look, cavalries, archers, pikemen, pikemen, veteran pikemen, etc. We haven't had any troops want to join us yet, but I think that if we can actually get some level of diplomacy, we could be in pretty good shape actually. Maybe I've made a mistake here. And maybe it's important that we try and get the upgraded troops first just because they are uh, there's room in my army for them to join pikemen right now. I, I have upgraded pikemen so they can't join. Maybe these archers. So maybe these maybe these pikemen maybe are not so much uh, as important as these archers. So we, we will see about who can join. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure why, but my stream will drop occasionally and it'll drop back and forth. So my apologies. In large part, I do believe it's because I am not plugged in to the internet. I, I'm just on Wi-Fi here where I'm at right now. So, okay. Good, good. I'm glad we're back. Okay. So, so my scouts have gone as far as they can go. And maybe we can find some uh, ability to pick up some free troops here. The bigger the army you have, the more likely they are to join you. We will see. 
We will see. Daughter of Slayer, shouts the sentry, your father abandoned Lambeau and left his empire to fall to barbarians. Can you prove to us that you have the strength of purpose that he lacked? Can you prove that you will remain true to the code of honor that we so revere in Lambeau? If not, you will never have the loyalty of the warriors of Arv. Unless I attack you and I just beat you. 13. I'm guessing that it's going to be all from the battlements. Yeah, it looks like we have a left turret, right turret, moat, and the fortifications. This is an absolute bastion, and it could not be at a better point. This castle, it looks like, is, is furthest north to our domains. It will be the first castle that's attacked if we run into some enemies or if some enemies want to encroach upon our lands. Um, we're not going to cast shield. Zents, I don't know, actually. Is the shield bug still there where you do where you actually take bonus damage from turrets. It, it specifically says in the tooltip, does not affect damage from turrets or ballista. Does it increase the damage as the bug once was? There's no bonus damage? Okay. So for that reason, I'm actually going to shield my archers. So that way these six archers are not going to be as big of a deal. Um, it's a small thing, but I know that that used to be a thing. And so I appreciate very, very much your expertise on the matter to make sure that we are we're doing that. Uh, I don't know if it was in F Heroes 2 or or where it was, but I seem to remember that there was a bug. Maybe I'm misremembering and it was in Heroes of Might and Magic 3. It's quite possible that I'm being confused with Heroes of Might and Magic 3. But whatever the case is, um, I just know that that was a bug in some capacity. Again, the, the details do escape me just a little bit. We are going to probably take a hit from these swordsmen, but we're going through this moat and ballista as quickly as possible in the og the shield would not protect from towers it just wasn't described yeah and that's how i would prefer it um i i think it's it's got a good use shield as a spell is a very good spell as we pick up the plus one defense and the luck it's a very good spell and i like it just the way it is whoa third level mage guild i don't think that we need to have it also protect in these other niche cases we're immediately going to get this jousting arena by the way we're immediately going to pick that up we we might trade for the crystal necessary to get a cathedral here tomorrow. It's day six. We need to be here day seven. Is there any other amount of crystal we can get? Windmill. There's a windmill here that we never picked up. Folks, this is... this is uh, uh, Maybe we pick up sulfur just so we can trade more resources. But, but one of the things that I love about Heroes 2 is that it plays so much more straightforward than it does for Heroes of Might and Magic 3. Heroes of Might and Magic 3 is much more of a knowledge check than Heroes of Might and Magic 2 is. Um, there's more knowing the interactions and that feels kind of bad. So one of the reasons more why I love Heroes 2 over Heroes 3. This is so weird. I feel like I need to land here just so I can like walk back and forth and find something special. It feels like there should be something special there. I don't know. Building up those towns to castle would mean more marketplaces. You're 1000% correct. Uh, and, and actually, Arcane Ham, I saw it, but I, I missed it, that you mentioned that uh, the upgrade from the town to the castle also will give you an extra 500 gold per day. We are a little bit short on wood and gold, and especially if we're going to go for the cathedral and the other upgraded castle. Ah, it's going to be close. It's going to be It's going to be super tight. I don't think we can make it. We'll, we'll do our best. We'll see what we can find. But um, I'm officially a little bit. It's a pipe dream. It's a pipe dream. So we'll see. Initially, shield worked against towers in F-Heroes 2, but we chose to implement the OG functioning since we couldn't say for sure whether the OG's shield worked like that by design or not. Very interesting. OK, and the fact that it was a conscious decision uh, makes all the difference for me. I've said it before. I'll say it again. I don't mind any of the decisions that have been made by Heroes of Might and Magic 2, like or F-Heroes 2 teams members. Um, in how things work. Every single choice I've been a big fan of. I've been I've been supportive. The important thing to me is less, oh my gosh, is less about, you know, what the choice is and more that there was a conscious decision. I've seen way too many people who just leave it to chance or just don't care, you know, like developers who just say, oh, it's whatever. I appreciate the thought that has gone into every single one of these decisions. That's what I'm trying to say here. It feels a bit weird how shield does not affect tower damage, in my opinion. Arcane him, yeah, I, I, I can also see that for sure. Um, where I can see, you know, what makes sense. Then again, vampire lords can always life steal off of golems. That seems weird, you know. There's just weird stuff all around. So I, there, there's going to be ups and downs. I don't know. It's, it, it's so weird. 
in the choices that we make as game players and game designers as far as what we consider good or bad um in that sense i think because because sometimes we're like yeah i need i need my fantasy to be intact and then sometimes we're like no but i really just would prefer the ease of play so it's back and forth i don't think i want the experience here more than i want to keep the troops we're just gonna let these archers run i'm very sad that they didn't join me it is what it is picking up the mercury here and I will pick up as much of this mercury as I can. That's five, that's six. I don't think we're gonna need a ton of mercury unless we are gonna be going for levels of mage guild. I think that we, we really try and trade here on day seven for 13 more crystal. We can get up to 14 for pretty much all of our ore. That'll prevent us from getting more castles later, upgrading towns to castles are, are the Paladins now better than the Crusade are Paladins now better than other troops later. You can't have both. You cannot have both. In one week, by the by the end of week four, we will have 14 crystal because of the natural generation of crystal from our crystal mine. I think that even though it pains me to lose one week's worth of paladins, I think that we are going to forego creating all of our resources and selling out. I don't think it's gonna be that big of a deal. Um, I think I'd much rather invest in these other towns. So that's what we're going to do instead. Um, let's see. It was the best compromise to just add that point in the right click info. Yeah, definitely. And Zen saying, yeah, logically, it seems weird. I guess maybe you could think of it like force fields in Heroes 3 and that towers can shoot over the shield. I guess so. Yeah, I suppose so. But but Arcane Ham, I'm totally with you. Like, it's a shield. It's a shield. It's a shield. Magically, it's a shield. It should do whatever shields do. Shields block damage from ranged stuff. It makes sense to me. I'm for it. Um, this is... Hold on. Whitefield? Whitefield is the castle that's more upgraded because it's got a captain's quarters and some of these other things. I think that we are going to spend the gold and the resources, and we're going to upgrade this to a castle. So we now have three knight castles. Oh, buddy. Oh, buddy. We're getting to the point where we can maybe do something funny. And by the way, um, I haven't said it, but I've been worried about it. We have Sir Gallant, we have Crodo, we have Trent Slayer. So I have Erica Slayer here. I'm guessing that this is the main big bad evil guy for my brother, Trent. And then we have Charity chasing after us and Myra. Oh gosh, they do have their giants. That's gonna be pretty scary. And if they start off with three or four castles like we do in their starting area, that's gonna be a little bit, a little bit scary. Um, we are being chased, by the way. Rathwant is going to go as far as he can. These heroes shouldn't be able to catch him, though, unless for some reason they picked up navigation. Plus, there is a statue unlocks. Yeah, so it's actually 750 gold that you can pick up in short order. So, yeah, I, I'm definitely I hear that loud and clear. I just realized, though, um, I clicked away a little too fast there. Was there a building I should have purchased here? No, we have the well. We already have the statue. It was fine to just leave it as was. We already did pick up the jousting arena in that in that castle, so no harm lost. I think I'm gonna save these swordsmen and these pikemen. I'm, I think I'm gonna hope that later I can get them to join me. Sounds a little weird. I think it's gonna be the thing I do. And rather than go through these cavalries, I think I'm gonna go to the north. Why? Because this road seems to go directly into my enemies. Am I as strong now as I'm ever gonna be? When are knights the strongest? Knights are strongest in the early game. When are wizards strongest? The longer the game goes, the stronger wizards get because the titans and the giants will overwhelm you. We know that they have some giants here. I'll tell you what, I, I originally said, oh, I don't want to go into them just now. If this road leads right into my enemies, I think I want to fight now. I do have a little bit of a resupply coming from Wilfrey. I do think I can probably get some additional troops here and here. We we might just start pouring troops in as quickly as possible and see if we can overwhelm our foes. I think I think that's gonna be our very best bet. So let's give it a try. Um, yeah, let's give it a try. We do still have these 40 archers now. I do want them to be rangers. Let's go to here have Wilfrey, well, join up as close as he can. And Wilfrey's gonna do this swap. We're gonna take the Rangers, we're gonna leave the Archers and take these champions. Wilfrey is going to try, as I move over these artifacts, he's gonna try and get these Archers upgraded because there is a upgraded, oh gosh, I moved Erica instead of Wilfrey, my bad. Um, 
We're going to try to get the archers upgraded into rangers before we do much else. And then we're going to have one big resupply and we're going to head through these cavalries and we're just going to do the very best we can. I think it's time to mix it up. I think it's time to fight. I think it's time to get absolutely crazy. This is this is us being strong. Let's go be strong. Trent is just following us. Okay, and he does have Titans. Okay, I feel better about this decision now. Better now than ever before. Um, If I could land there, I would. And the reason is, is because I think if I can duck into these stone lifts, that could be very useful for us. We might be running out of room. I do want to see what's on the other side of these lifts. And just being able to pop through and back and forth, that actually goes a long, long ways towards us being successful, I think. Um, we do have the gold and resources to upgrade this other town into a castle. Perhaps we should. Perhaps we should. Be strong like Fix Fox Kid. Yeah, I'll be as strong as I can. That kid is very strong. Uh, we're going to avoid the jousting arena now because we're going to need another resupply in just one moment. Glad I didn't land because Red is immediately saying hi to us. Yellow might be backing off. Oh, I thought that they might have been backing off because they we ran out of their view. Maybe we ran into the darkness and then they couldn't pursue us. It looks like Myra just wants to deal with Flint. Again, very glad that Rathmont did not land in this instance. We're going to pick up gold, wood. Yeah, and for the knights who need so, so much wood, this is the best thing that could happen to us. My word, getting into the boat was actually pretty big. Um, Erica's going to stay there for now. We're going to do we're going to do this. We're going to get the archers to here. Pick up the archers. I think that the 4000 gold upgrading archers is worth it. I think that we get all these upgraded swordsmen and pikemen or we consider upgrading uh, for 3000 gold up to the champions. Those eight cavalries into champions wouldn't have been nearly as useful. And then the rest of our gold goes into rangers. We have now purchased out the strongest army we could. And folks, I think that this looks pretty darn awesome. This feels great. I'm going to take the ranger and so Ambrose has a fifth five speed creature. Okay. And Erica's ready to go. We're going to go straight for the enemy. Let's go defeat some titans. Let's go be big, bold, and scary. And let's be smart. If we lose Erica, we don't lose the scenario, but... We're going to be in a very bad way. Diplomacy might be useful if we could play a little bit of a attack and retreat type of game. We'll see. We'll see. Funny enough, that was hilarious. Did you see that? So red hopped in yellow's boat and then yellow was obligated to attack them. Now yellow is stuck over here because the boat gets scuttled upon a loss in a battle. So very funny. So we have one, two and three types of stone lifts. Uh, maybe Zens could speak to this, but I saw some discussion uh, from Push Pop and some of the other uh, graphical artists, people that are working on the game, um, who mentioned maybe doing additional types of lits. Could you imagine having more than just one, two, and three types of stone lits, and you have like five, ten? The added flexibility you would have in scenarios is insane. I don't know if that's going to be part of the overall plan or not. Maybe since you could speak to that, maybe not. Uh, but that would be pretty interesting. Oh, and Arcane Hymn says one-way monoliths would be cool. I definitely agree with that. I think that'd be awesome. Um, a very interesting strategy to finding uh, object in a lot of these later, later iterations of Heroes of Might and Magic. We are going to fight these cavalries. Even the losses are going to be acceptable for 570 experience. Let's see if we can do any better. El Hazard 42, Fix Fox in chat. How you doing, brother? Nice to see you. Uh, yes, personally, I would like to see a Lith type that lets you choose the destination. Yeah. And, and I I don't know. Since you mentioned earlier that you're not a programmer when it came to working on the map editor, but, and, and I'm not either, but it, it seems like that would be, I don't want to say easy to implement, but that would be doable anyway. How about that? I feel like that would be fairly doable uh, to get a, a destination specific defining type of lith. I think that'd be pretty nifty. Um, pikemen are just going to get in the way. These 13 champions are going to attack here. Let's kill here and bam it's definitely doable yeah definitely doable that's the kind of spirit that's what i like to hear it's definitely doable <laughs> okay we are in a weird spot folks we're going through all these creatures we are officially getting out of the snow and getting into this cracked earth terrain i think that we can actually stop the rocks watch this um we can stop the rocks from getting into these rangers if we just go into a completely defensive position i think if i just hit q we lose no rangers and that was i was right so uh, save ourselves a little bit of time and much needed to avoid situations like surf and turf. Yeah. Yeah. My, my own little, um, 
Zens is referencing Surf and Turf, where there's tons and tons and tons of... Very nice. Tons and tons and tons of different lifts from island to island. And yeah, if, if you have access to one lift, you pretty much have access to all of them. Folks, we've got a ton of precious resources. I love logistics. That's going to be very useful now. I mentioned earlier that, well, do you need the wisdom? Do you not need the wisdom? I'm guessing, actually, that we can go into some fourth level spells sooner rather than later. I'm going to pick up the wisdom. Do I love that decision? It's a decision. It's the decision I'm going to make, but this could come back to bite me. The extra 10% movement points might be very critically important. I don't know. Where is Trent Slayer? I lost track of him. The bulk of his army is over here, at least his lower tier creatures, but he does have a few titans. We can beat a few titans. We can definitely beat a few titans, and I'm, and I'm planning on that uh, as soon as possible. We've got 4,500 gold. Let's just do one quick check. I keep clicking on these castles, and I keep struggling to actually upgrade them effectively. Jousting Arena, is it time to get the Jousting Arena? Yes, it is. So that way we don't forget, and then we're one step closer to a cathedral. Uh, again, we're going to get a cathedral here. We're going to have three cathedrals in, sh in very, very soon. Three cathedrals? Maybe two. Maybe it's just two. Oh, oh. Summon boat. It's a good spell. Rathma is feeling the pressure. Jem is going to have to get into the boat before she can get us. She was one step away, and that feels terrific. Rathma is going to sail past. He's going to do a... He's going to make a sign with his hand with his finger in his thumb in the shape of an L on his forehead. And the years are going to start coming and they won't stop coming. And Jem's going to be very, very sad that she couldn't reach Rathmont. And if she hops into the boat, we might have some fireworks here. If Myra, the yellow uh, wizard, takes on the green sorceress Jem, I'll be feeling pretty okay about that. I'll be feeling pretty okay with that. So the, the roads, Arcane Him mentioned that the roads were very interesting. I think that the river is also very interesting too. Look at this because it gives you easy access to each of the main castles. I'm guessing that this is Green's main castle. I'm guessing that this is Yellow's main castle. And I'm guessing that this is my main castle, which it is. So this riverway is so very critically important. That's so interesting. What good map design. I think that that's good map design. At the very least, it's interesting, if not good. I think it's both good and interesting. So I, I'm thrilled with what we have here. Um, We are trying to get troops to the front. I think that when I need to put troops to the front, I'm going to have another troop, another uh, hero get hired so they can do that. I'm going to have Wilfrey go into this corner. We mentioned earlier there was a little text bubble that popped up that said, oh, hey, by the way, Lord Slayer left something in the woods. It's his job. It's Wilfrey's job now to go and find whatever it is. Whatever that thing was, he's going to find it. Darion, I'm guessing that that's not a long-term... Uh, castle. I'm guessing that that was a town that they upgraded into a castle. That landmark stone beside the road, it reminds you of a sketch one of your father's companions made. Perhaps Lord Slayer once traveled in that forsaken canyon to the east. Interesting. Trenlo, hey yo, this map is great. Hey there, how you doing? Yeah, I'm enjoying this map very, very much so far. We're back. We're back. But yeah, uh, Trenlo, I'm definitely enjoying this map. This is a very excellent map. I'm having a lot of fun with this map. And and one of those maps is very, very beautiful, which does mean a lot to me. It really matters to me if a map is beautiful or not. So thrilled so far. Um, One cathedral there, one cathedral there. No purchases to make at this time. Ambrose is just doing scouting. Ambrose's whole job is just to scout. We do have Jem go into the boat. Yellow takes one look at the derelict shipyard. We have walked into basically two other wizard castles. And they're doing a little bit of defensive posturing here. Not a lot, but just a little bit. Just a little bit. I think that more than these castles, it's day five. I think that we need to head straight for what I believe to be their main castle. And we hope that Trent Slayer is far, far away that we can overwhelm his forces in this castle sooner rather than later. Castor has no chance. We pick up this observation tower. Let's see if we can find him. So one, two, three. Wow, one, two, three castles. And there he is. There's Trent Slayer. I'm going to guess that he does not have titans in multiple castles. He's got to have only titans in one castle. So 
We are being pursued by Alamar. Myra's hot on our heels. There's a boat that landed here. Let's just continue to go up the way and see what else we can find. Hey, Fix Fox from Dino Toss. I just played through this one myself about a month ago and I discovered the F Heroes 2 mod via your channel. Thank you so much for the content. Glad I can catch it live. Good luck. Thank you so much, Dino Toss. I appreciate it. Thank you so very much. I'm, I'm glad that you enjoyed this map. That lets me know that I'm playing the right kind of map. So thank you so much. Zens Man, it was nice hanging out. I'll be staying around lurking. Hey, I appreciate it, man. Thank you so very much. Thanks for the insights. And again, thanks for being such a great uh, member of the F Heroes 2 team for everything that we got going on. Yeah, stream keeps dropping. That's pretty frustrating. Let me do one quick thing here. Uh, if you will, just humor me for a moment. I'm just gonna run a quick speed test. Check to see if anything's trying to download on my side of things. I should have I should have like a little technical difficulty thing popping up or down. Yeah, it says I'm still getting 200 megabytes of download speed and upload speed. It's just that the connection is not ideal, I'm guessing. So that's a little bit frustrating. Um, okay. Well, I'm gonna do the best I can to kind of soldier on with this, folks. Um, I do apologize that we're having uh, drops back and forth. Not if they happen, I guess, but when they happen, I, I do apologize. Um, as I've mentioned before, I do stream at my local library, and I cannot control how how well things go here. Today was kind of funny. Um, today was kind of funny because I needed to wait my turn, as it were. There were several people that were already in the rooms that I can occasionally use for this purpose. And I feel bad because I don't want to take the resources away from somebody else. But I really wanted it. I needed it. It was it, it was my turn, you know, uh, and so I had to wait a little bit. And that's why we started a little bit later than usual. But hopefully long term, the stream is going to stay stable enough that we can enjoy ourselves here. So I do apologize and I appreciate your patience as we work our way through this. Thank you very much. We do have a fight here. Captain of Nervalon. Nervalon? Nervalon? And not much here. This shouldn't be too hard of a fight. I'm just going to cast one or two spells to kind of help this go better. I think that ideally, if I can paralyze the rocks, that's going to eliminate an offensive spell from this individual. And then I'll keep the rangers safe. Then again, if I paralyze the Arc Magi now, we're going to be just as good or better off. So uh, let's just take our losses. There's going to be some serious losses here. They do cast the Dispel Magic. I think that was a great choice on their part. Horus come out to play and they immediately get blasted down. The Crusaders in the water is generally not something I like to do, and here's why. Uh, you do have the negative three defense when you are in the moat, and if they get attacked, they're gonna have a little bit of a hard time. It's gonna be what it is. It'll be what it is. That was such a smart move, I like it. Uh, which move? The, the Dispel from them, the Paralyze on my end. Uh, there's a lot of smart moves. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just a simple, I'm a simple man. Fading Dispel, you know what, and, and he only has so many spell points and only so many spells, but I think overall it's not a bad use of my time. What else am I going to use for my 21 spell points at this time? Tough to say, I don't really know. Can't paralyze the giants, the, Ar the Arc Magi have already gone. I think we're just going to do the Cold Ray. Yeah, we're just going to start working on these giants. Might as well. Giants onto the Master Swordsman. And then the champions, I think, can get in here and deal with these iron golems right now. Yep, six go down. So 29 rangers, not very good. Don't love it, but it is what it is. Uh, almost 1,300 experience. And more importantly, though, here's the big thing. Here's the kicker. We got giants. Now, these are not titans. You know what that means? That means that I missed. I missed. That means that one of these other castles actually has the titans. <sighs> It's day six, and it's gonna be three days to go this way or three days to go this way. You know what we're gonna do? We're gonna do something I don't love to do. Oh, Trent is right there. He's just puppy guarding. Gleave? Actually, I'm guessing because there's Titans here, I'm guessing that that's where the Titans are. That's gotta be where the Titans are. And now if, and this is a pretty big if, 
But if I can get another hero purchased, not have Trent attack me, and this is all on road, I might be able to still pick up that town day one. Let's see, because it's going to be here at the end of day seven, day three. You know what? Actually, it's not going to matter. Um, I was worried that they were going to get the opportunity to purchase more Titans, and I just realized that I was incorrect. I'm going to get there on day one before they get the opportunity to purchase those troops. Okay. Oh, look at this. There actually is something that I missed. I didn't realize that there was these artifacts right here. That's very interesting. I'm wondering if when we step here, there's going to be like a little a little uh, bubble, but there is a nice plus one, plus one there. Rathmon did pick up a spiked helm as well, but pretty interesting. Um, they had mentioned earlier the reason why I went so far was because there was something that indicated that maybe Lord Slayer had left something fun, and it looks like we were right. I think that this river probably ends right over here, and so for that reason, I'm just going to land. We're going to land, and we're going to do as much exploring as we possibly can with Rathmont, knowing that we have Alamar hot on our heels. We continue to have Ambrose do a little bit of searching for us. Looks like he's going to go down, though. I wandered right into Crodo. That's absolutely ideal. That's exactly what you want to do every single time. Are there any troops to purchase here? Just the halflings. We will purchase them in case Trent Slayer tries to get behind us. Okay. And then day six. Mm. Folks, I think we have a decision here. We can use resources on cathedrals, right? As Rathmont goes down. We can use resources on cathedrals. Or knowing that we have access to giants and titans, we can instead try to take the best unit in the game and leverage that to our benefit. Right? Like we have the choice. We can do we can do either. We can either try and build up our knight faction troops or we can do what knights are probably the best at and use their early game advantage to then steal the infrastructure and advancements that other factions have done. I think that that's what we're going to do. And so um, rather than get that cathedral like we've been talking about, I think that we're going to invest in getting that one cloud castle upgraded and we're going to have hopefully six titans a week from here on out. That's what we're going to do. That's what we're going to do. Uh, the thing you see before you is shocking and barbaric, yet you have no doubt that your father once used it. Why would he stoop to employing such a thing in spite of its power? Almost against your better judgment, you move to retrieve it pondering the motives of your dead father. Uh, unfortunately, there's a nearby Cyclops here. We're not going to pick up this plus one, plus one. Uh, it's just not going to happen. So funny. I'm hoping that this was it. I'm hoping that that was the special thing. And I don't have to waste my time with Wilfrey going all over Tarnation, trying to find something nifty. Um, last day. Let's just make sure that there's no other purchases. Nothing here. We're going to wait on the castle. Cathedral. We're, we're going to save the resources. We're going to save the resources. Oh, I've got resources. I've, I've got resources. Got a couple of marketplaces. Tell you what, we're going to trade. We're going to trade. It makes it makes a little too much sense. When you have 99 ore, it makes too much sense not to trade for at least six. Go back and pick up a cathedral. Paladins and Crusaders are good units. I don't dislike them. Um, sometimes it's a little bit of a struggle to use them effectively, but they're a good unit. So uh, we're going to move forward with that. We got yellow kind of moving to the middle. Trent. Lord Slayer, Trent Slayer. He went over there. Okay. And then we have to. And, and I mean this. We have to get some Titans here. Big losses. That's okay. We can deal with that. Four Titans. There's definitely Titans here. No doubt. Let's make this happen. Tell you what I wish I had right now. I wish I had a Disrupting Ray. A Disrupting Ray against Titans can be so very, very good. Instantly, we get through the wall at the very, very bottom. Oh, buddy, here we come. We are coming full tilt. They opt to blind the Master Swordsman. I have a choice. I actually waited on my spell usage. I can... Oh, I do pick up... I did pick up the Disrupting Ray. I did. Um, we have a couple choices on what we can do. I can start disrupting Ray these Titans, which I think is going to be the best for me, or I can try and get Master Swordsman down the way. There's only going to be, well, there's going to be two more blinds coming out if I let the enemies do that. I could always paralyze the Magi now. 17 spell points left. Nine would be for the Paralyze. I think I'd rather have the Disrupting Rays, though. 
I think I'd rather have the disrupting rays. Um, so that way, hopefully, my troops stop doing negative damage and start doing bonus damage. I think that that's going to be the very best thing for me. So let's let's make that happen. These steel golems are going to step right in front of my troops. I can't kill them all just yet. I cannot kill them all. I think 14 champions will be able to deal with them. But just in case, let's make sure that the champions only waste one turn trying to go through these steel golems. Um, we are going to wait now. I'm guessing that there's going to be one more blind coming out. Let's see what we get. Oh, very nice. Excellent. Good morale. What a great time for good morale. 46 down to 41 on the Rangers. I actually don't mind the blind on the Rangers. They're going to be doing half damage over the wall anyway. I just don't care. Really, I don't. So it, it's probably actually not a bad time for one more disrupting ray because we're coming for you, buddy. Oh, we're coming for you. We have broken through the walls. This turn, we're going to start to do some major damage. We're going to leave the one mage here. We're going to stay out of the way of the Crusaders so they can go around and still get to the Titans. But we're still going to do our best to defeat the rocks. If we park here, then the Crusaders can't come in. If we park here, then there's no room to get around the rocks. One more spell. We do a haste. No haste. Stone skin. Stone skin's pretty much what we have. I'll tell you what, let's actually do the shield. Let's shield our champions. I think that they are our best unit. Let's see where... Okay, so they actually went for the Crusaders instead. Ah, and it looks like I cannot get around. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I guess I thought I could get around it. I guess I cannot, so... Sad to see that happen. Pikemen then are just gonna clean up this Magi. And we're just gonna continue on. Yeah, okay. And note that because the wall here got destroyed, that's why they turned their attention onto these Rangers. The Rangers weren't their focus and they wouldn't have unblinded the Rangers or taken the damage there, except that the Rangers uh, could now do full damage because there was no section of wall that was stopping them. So this is ultimately gonna be a, a really rough fight, obviously, but I think we're gonna, we're gonna be okay. Um, we now have the Master Swordsman. They're gonna get here in just a couple of turns. We don't care about skeletons whatsoever. Good luck on the champions. We finally kill one of the Titans. It's going to be the Master Swordsman that really win this for us. Uh, but we're very quickly going to transition from knight-based troops into wizard-based troops. So, are we back on chat, by the way? I, I got a notification that, uh, that we were back, but just in case we're not. Am I talking to nobody? I might be, and that's okay if I am. Generally, that's what I do when I'm just playing um, and I record videos before I upload them later is I just I just play without talking to anybody. And so I'm pretty darn used to that. But if I need to do a fix, that would be also nice to know as well. Picking up the expert wisdom here and we do find Titans. We absolutely find Titans. So we are up to potentially six Titans. We're going to buy all five that we can right now. Thirty two hundred gold remaining. Let's. Let's press on here and here. And we're going to save as many gems as possible for later. And then with whatever movement points we have left, we're going to head back. And as good as Trent Slayer might be as a hero, I think that we're going to be better. If he is magically inclined and we are uh, not that, then so be it. Okay. So with that being said, Wilfrey is going to go grab some troops. I think that because we know that Favre has the fortifications and the defenses and things like that, we're going to use him to uh, get the troops all up to here so that these enemies won't slide into our territory. Starting in the far left actually is a huge bonus for us because if we're in the middle, you have to deal with troops from the west and the east. And so starting off in the, one of the corners does have a huge advantage for us. And so we're going to we're going to take that advantage and roll with it. And so it looks like Trent is making a beeline for uh, Nervalon. We're not going to allow him to do that. We're just going to take that from him immediately. The enemy has fled. I, I think that these losses are looking totally acceptable. The only thing that we're going to do is see if we can actually defeat him uh, straight up um, in this straight up fight without him running away. Uh, 
Rangers counts goes down from 24 down to four. They're pretty much useless at this point. The Master of Swordsmen, they're going to hang around for a little while. They're going to be pretty darn useful for us. Uh, everybody else is going to be a little bit of a, a little bit of a waste until we can get some good other wizard troops to flesh out our army. But if you have Titans, nothing else matters. Nothing else matters except for Titans. So, uh, 41 hit points left. We have no spells. Let's just defeat our Titan friends here. And we'll see if we can keep this enemy from fleeing. Likelihood, it feels fairly low, but if we have the good morale, it's possible. It's possible. Okay, uh, 14 of the Iron Golems down to 13, and he does run here. That was the exact perfect time for him to run. I am happy that the FHEROES 2 AI is doing a great job of knowing when to stay and when to go. Now let's take the last of these wizard castles. I anticipate that they're just going to sit here and try and defend and hold out. And I think that they're going to fail terribly. I think that they're going to fail horribly, actually. So will free will continue on. And I hate to say it, but uh, that's just showbiz people. Um, I would love for me to get to the point where I can stream from home, from the comfort of my own home and things like that. It's just not going to happen. Um, for reasons I've already mentioned. And so we're just gonna make the very best of our situation here. And I guess today that there are too many people trying to use the internet. I am just simply one of them. So with that being said though, uh, we've stopped the stream and now we're just gonna go straight into uh, Fix Fox kind of entertaining himself with his own commentary. And that's just fine. Wilfrey has been very, very silly. He keeps going back and forth and he keeps not being sure of what he wants to do because I'm playing somewhat distracted. So I'm trying to handle technical stuff and play at the same time. And I'll tell you what, I, I'm not the most, how do I put this? I'm not the best multitasker that you've ever seen. I am very amazed at people that can multitask very, very well. And there's a good many people that can do it so very well, but I'm not one of them. I'm just not, I'm just not that guy. Just not that guy. Um, I'm very happy uh, for the folks that can turn a phrase and they can be very quick witted and speak. Ooh, we're gonna take the diplomacy. Uh, and can speak quickly, rapidly, and smartly. But I'm also very cautious of those individuals. And here's how I mean. I don't mean that if you're a fast talking son of a gun that I just don't like you, but I'm very well aware that there are people out there who will, rather than have a good sound argument or conversation, they will instead just talk real fast in order to get people to believe them. When you're being blitzed by a barrage of BS, Oftentimes, it's easier just to go, yeah, that sounds right, because somebody sounds so sure of themselves. They appear to be very sure of themselves. I personally, uh, I personally don't think that we need to be so quick talking. I would prefer to have good quality of what I'm saying rather than um, just simply speak a, a million miles an hour in order to get you to agree with me. Oh my goodness, look at this. Okay, so folks, we've got a fourth level mage guild here. We've got slow, bloodlust, cure, dispel magic. Getting up to the advanced wisdom was ec was a definitely excellent decision here. And so we've got some terrific spells that we've picked up so far. And I think that we're gonna pick up this mage guild very, very soon. We just, oh, we did pick up the expert wisdom. We're going to go straight for it. Um, we're gonna trade the resources now before we do anything else. We're gonna trade for the one crystal here. And we're going to pick up our fifth level mage guild. I'm hoping that we do not get a dimension door. I'm hoping we do not get a town portal. And the reason being is because we, we don't use those spells. Instead, we get the resurrect true and the hypnotize. Resurrect true is worth it. Hypnotize, good spell. Happy for it. Um, this library ultimately gave us the slow, the blind, and the, the identify hero and the fire blast. The hypnotize is kind of meh, but the resurrect true, I think that that might be enough to just push us into some late game relevance. Uh, resurrect true is less valuable in the late game as yellow player's been vanquished, which is massive, massive. We're gonna have to keep an eye out for Trent Slayer. Hopefully he appears here somewhere and we can pick him up because I think he was a good hero. But Resurrect True actually is more of a mid game type of bell in my opinion. And that's mostly because it's gonna save you troops that you would otherwise lose. It's not necessarily going to help you more so in the late game because the troop stacks get way too big there's just there's just too much you have to deal with um and resurrecting true 450 hit points of titans at a time is more effective in the mid game than in the late game when one stack of bone dragons can take out tons like like 10 or 15 or 20 of your 
titans. So just interesting things to think about, about when a spell is most valuable. Right now, the titans are, are backed up by a resurrect true, and that feels excellent. Uh, we do pick up the logistics here and the Book of the Elements. Tell you what, the Book of the Elements is an artifact I don't really love in most times, but because it, uh, it doubles the effectiveness of all our summoning spells, and because we have wizards here, and we have all these resources, I actually think it's not gonna be a bad idea to try and build up another mage guild to fifth level so we can get maybe some of those nice summoning spells. I think that we're gonna find that that will be pretty useful for us if we can but manage to make that happen. Okay, um, let's see. And so I've just adjusted a couple things here so that way I'm playing on a full screen and I just got rid of the chat since we're not gonna be using chat moving forward for the rest of this video. Um, sad for it. Not what I would ideally like, but let's continue all the same. So, we do want to still pick up Cloud Castles and, and some of these other things. Let's wait until we can get a couple more gems. We've got one more day. This is the final day. Investments made through the Lucky Larry's savings and loan company turned sour. You've learned a valuable lesson about junk bonds. Negative 1,200 gold. Ouch. We have 4,900 gold here on day seven. Let's get as many of these Cloud Castles as we can. Uh, for example, right here, we need six gems. Let's get six gems. Easy peasy. And then let's see about this other one. We're too far away. Uh, it's just not feasible to pick up 20 gems. So we're not going to do that. But we're very happy for what we've been able to get so far. Let's have Erica Slayer head off into the east. I think with six Titans, I'm going to be better than any amount of phoenixes. I know we've seen some phoenixes so far. I think that we're just going to be better than any amount of phoenixes. Wilfrey is going to wait. His job is going to be to bring troops to the front if we have some problems uh, with enemies coming this way or from this way. We do see green for the first time, like right in our face. We've seen green a couple of times, but now they are right in our face, and that changes things massively. Orange, by the way, is not one of the four Slayer children. So Orange does have this hero that is uh, hanging out over here, Dennis Moore throngs and, and hordes of archers and rogues. He was spoken of in a previous scenario, so that's pretty interesting. This is Terra Slayer. They have made her a nobody. She has got nothing, and I feel pretty bad about that because thematically, we would like to have our sibling be pretty tough and nasty to deal with, but unfortunately, that's just not the way it is. Um, we are completely out of spell points. I don't know what I'm doing. We should have picked up a magic well at some point we did not that's okay we're gonna have lord kilburn pick up sulfur and maybe go to the north in just a second otherwise let's pick up this magic well it's day one it doesn't really matter to me if we pick up castles slowly or not we're gonna get what we need in short order and i'm going right now for a basically a one hero approach right i think that you can see, you may say to yourself, Big Sox, why aren't you doing more here? Um, as we pick up Mass Low, Mass Shield, my word. But Fix Fox, why aren't you doing more with more heroes? I sure could, but I can play at a much more rapid pace. And when my objectives are pretty clear cut to me right now, it doesn't feel like I need to put more brain power into making more heroes move. Um, maybe in the later stages of this game, I will have some issues, but because I've been able to get all the way up to Titans right now, I am so big, I am so strong, I am so powerful that I'm just not worried about any of these fights. I'm probably a little bit worried about a pack of phoenixes, to be honest. I'm probably worried about a pack of phoenixes. But because of my great spells, I'm not I'm not even that worried about that fight. I'm really not. The enemy has surrendered. We'll take their gold. We'll take everything else they have. Expert logistics. Terrific. And I think that was actually Terra Slayer that we just ran into there. And with so much gold, I mean, I'm to the point now where let's get another hero here. Gonna be Falagar. He's level two. Sure, why not? And let's have him bring up some other troops. And we're low on gems. Let's have Falagar go and pick up some of these extra things over here. There's a there's an alchemist lab here. There's a sawmill not too far over here. Let's let's play correctly. I I feel like I've wandered into an amazing boon and i feel like i don't need to play um i don't need to sweat this scenario like i generally do in the early games 
once you get this level of titans, I don't think that whatever red he red's heroes are, red is necromancers, I don't think that they're going to be able to hold up to the titans. The, the wizard faction is the best faction out of all of them uh, as far as late game army. And so since I'm up to titans, I'm just not nearly so worried about what else anybody can do for us. So we're going to sleep will free for now. Let's see what Terra Slayer does. She doesn't want any part of me. I do want to get some Titans up to the front here. It's going to take me a, a minute. Because Dennis Moore just landed, I'm actually going to go south more than anything. As we pick up the sign, my child who seeks to follow my steps is fair lands dedicated to peace and beauty. Uh, it encompasses all that I have ever really loved in life. But the people of this place do not realize how easily the beauty they have here can be shattered and what is needed to protect it. Hope you have the wisdom to know the price of maintaining this peace. It sounds great, but you said the same thing to me over here, buddy. And I mean, I think that this guy is just uh, being a little bit silly and treating all of his children the same. And we're just not. We're just not. So uh, we've eliminated two of our Slayer siblings. Here's the last one. He is going to be a necromancer. It looks like red has been encroaching on this territory very, very quickly. This is going to be an epic showdown between a pack of bone dragons and a pack of phoenixes. I don't want any part of that until I can get some of these other titans up to the front. So let's do two titans here. Let's trade for the other resources necessary. Whoa, let's not gift anybody anything. Rathma is back. Thrilled to have him. And I'm not even going to bring up the Arc Magi or the Magi or anything like that. We're just going to get these troops up to the front as quickly as we possibly can. Let's have Thalagar actually take the troops. Rathmont will be the one to go pick up that Mercury. Balgar is then going to go to Dimitri. And without trying to, I more or less did a little bit of a hero chain here. Uh, Dimitri is going to go on to Mandigal. Are there Titans here? No. We have one set of Titans, and so that's the ones that we already have. We're going to trade here. And the Mandigal is going to head into the Swamps of Sorrow with nothing but good vibes for any of the creatures that he finds in that swamp. So, The wizardry in the air is palpable. The land itself has been changed by it. Up ahead, you see the shadows cast by the imposing figures of giants, among the mightiest of the legions of the Empire. We shall show you the power of the Emperor's legacy, they thunder. Face us if you dare. I... Don't dare with 30 peasants, but we will be back. My, my, my goal here, big pause. Let's just talk. Let's just, let's just talk. My night troops here, I'm very glad that I got up to paladins in a lot of these castles. That's very nice. It's really going to be the wizards that carry me forward. Those are going to be the troops that comprise the majority of my army. And more than that... I figure that if I can then take out my blue siblings here and my red siblings over here to the far east, I think that then I can then focus my attention on going north and then deal with whatever gauntlet of trials beset me before I get to the castle of uh, Verminthax. That's not the way you say that, but get to our victory condition castle. And so these troops were a good troop to start off with to then snowball us into this area and then this snowballs us into this area, and so on and so forth. And then pretty soon we're going to be heading north. Until that time, let's just do the best we can with what we have. Okay. So red decided not to attack green. Those phoenixes and those bone dragons, we're going to have to defeat them one by one by one. What? Hold on. What? This enemy is the is the guy that was like this. Uh, I don't know what was he. This big scary Dennis more than night. This he's kind of like the Dread Pirate Roberts. This army is not that scary. Are we just going to lose to the shield? Hold on, we've got some really good spells, and we've got the resurrect true. So long as we can uh, resurrect true 100 hit points at a time, like we're gonna be okay. Um, I feel like if the goal. We only have 50 spell points, and that means that we essentially have two Resurrect Trues, one Steel Skin, and like a Bless or something like that. Maybe, since these Grand Elves have already gone, and that spell is going to last for a long, long time. I mean, maybe we just try and obliterate some of these other enemies, these other enemies down here. We have six attack, nine defense. They've got five attack, seven defense. 
This might be more than I want to deal with. These are a lot of ranged troops. This is an awful lot to deal with. Huh. Holy cow. The rangers are actually better than the base level elves here. How do we do this? Blind is good. I'm guessing that if we blind him, though, that he's going to end up doing an immediate cure. Maybe the mass curse. Two to three. No, the range, the range isn't amazing for a curse. Hypnotize, there's just no chance. It's not nearly good enough. Paralyze or a blind is just as good. I, I mean, the shield, honestly, the shield and the mass shield, that might be the play. For three spell points, we can do a shield and then multiple resurrect trues. Yeah, this is interesting. This is so interesting. We're going to take so much damage from the range creatures and we can kill pretty much all these rogues in one fell swoop. How about we do that? How about we do our shield and literally half the damage from all these enemies right now? Let's take half damage from everybody from here on out. And we will let the swordsmen and the pikemen deal with these rogues. If we, if we devote one lightning bolt now to the rogues, then we can deal with them much more easily. He's got to have pretty bad morale, doesn't he? No, they've got great morale. They could get here in turn one. Let's, let's use our first lightning bolt on reducing damage from these rangers. And then from there on out, we will do our best to protect everybody else as we're, as we're heading on. What an interesting fight. What a very interesting fight. One, two, three, four, five. We got to step in front of these rogues. We're going to take the first hit because um, they have no retaliation. So you don't want to let them hit you anyway. So 22 down to 19. Feels pretty good. We do lose one Titan. We're down to five. I think that we win this fight, but I think that you really have to have that shield. The shield is just that good. In fact, I think it's so good that I think that Dennis is going to probably consider if I was him. I would probably consider trying to take that shield off. I would. I would 100% want to take that shield off. Huh. So for that reason, we're, not, we're actually going to wait. We're not going to cast a spell right now. Um, we don't want to do half damage to these elves. We're going to kill six to nine there, or we're going to kill 21 to 31 archers here. Let's kill 21 to 31 archers. He does do the dispel. He actually spends the spell points or the, the attack damage onto the Master Swordsman. I don't think that's a bad decision. I don't think I want to actually have the Master Swordsman move. Rogues do 100 damage. Three Master Swordsmen perish. Uh... I just don't want to lose all five Master Swordsmen and give the rogues a straight shot at my Titan. So we're going to skip for now. Okay. And then from here on out, we're just going to kill them where we can. Very interesting. Oh, I should have. Oh, I should have cast my shield again. I missed. I missed that. I completely and utterly missed that. That was my mistake. Because now I missed one whole turn of spells because I just wasn't even thinking. Wow. What a what a critical error. Critical error. My word. Um, you've got 86 of these nasty boys here that you got to deal with. And you do. You have to deal with them. Um, these Master Swordsmen kind of have to stay alive. Or we're probably going to take full damage from the Elves one more time. And then we'll cast our shield now. Wow. Not, not the best I've ever fought a fight. In fact, this is... Kind of close to the worst I've ever fought a fight. We're going to sit right here. We're probably going to lose a lot of troops on their retaliation in just one second. We have to spend one whole turn dealing with just 32 of these rogues. We shall, but I don't love it. Shield there. Okay. Okay. Thankfully, the Master Swordsman is still around. I, I think that we check. 13 spell points left. We saw 45. That's two resurrect trues. Two resurrect trues. For only 100 hit points, though. It's not that many. It's not that much. It's really not that much. Um. Wow. I think we're to the point where a blind is probably the very best thing for us. Because I don't think that Dennis is going to be able to stay on top of removing the blinds. Not as well as he would like anyway. And I think that he actually used a dispel instead of a cure last time on these elves. And if he dispels all of his beneficial spells, then so be it. That's fine for me. 
We're going to eliminate the damage there. And with 90 hit points left, I mean, we can still kill uh, as many archers as we can. Tell you what, let's just stay on top of the blinds. Let's continue to blind. Let's just remove damage where we can. Nice. Okay, and it's a cure, not a dispel. So that does matter. We're down to two titans. I feel like we... Oh my gosh, this is bad. This is so bad. Now we're behind on blinds. Uh, if we had snuck in the steel skin early, that would have been so good. He's got seven spell points left. He's got one more. Okay, here's the deal. Here's the deal. He has exactly one more... Dispel magic. He's got one more. I think that we just have to blind lock at this point. I think I've I've really messed up this fight. I think we just gotta go straight for the blind lock. So we're gonna blind one more time. They're gonna use their last cure. And we're gonna take out as much of these troops as we can. It's not great. But we're, we should have one Titan available at the very end of this. And then you've got to blind lock. It's a big group here. 73 hit points. No, that's not going to be it. No, that's not going to be it. Jeez, folks, this has been terrible. I've done this fight so poorly. Huh. We're going to run. 2,000 gold. Yeah, we're going to do it. That's crazy. Uh, you know what? Okay, so so this is a this is a very interesting case study. Um, and I'm, and I can tell you what I'm going to do later. I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back and I'm going to try to refight this scenario and, and figure out what the win is. I feel like I should do that next, like not right in the middle of this game because I don't, I don't play restarts. Um, and so we're not going to do that now, but at the very end of this, we're going to go back and we're going to, we're going to see how that fight went because that's very, very interesting. Um, a representative from the Lord Slayer Memorial Theme Park comes by and gives you a rebate offer for your admission fees. She tells you that the park is on an island to the northwest and invites you to come for a visit. That's 250 gold. Okay, very interesting. Um, let's head back. There's nothing here to get. Balagar is going to continue to pick up some freebies. Day five, so we got some time on that. We've already picked up there. We need 1,000 gold here. Water wheel here. Uh, so, some sulfur there. Mandigal is bringing forth some troops. I think, I think that we want to purchase whatever we can here. There is nothing to purchase. So we're going to give up this castle here. We're going to rehire Erica here with her one Titan. Interesting. Interesting. And we're going to try and get these three Titans up to the front as quickly as we can. Um, Fixed Fox, why don't you just pick all your giants up and then upgrade them at this one place that you already have your upgraded titans. Um, the answer is, is because it's double expensive. It's not just single expensive, it's double expensive to do that. Uh, whenever you upgrade troops, it's double the cost that it would cost the troops to, to get them upgraded. And that's just too much. We, we cannot deal with that. That's more than I can bear to stand. For example, uh, one giant goes for 2,000 gold and one gems. That means that we have to pay the difference in this cost from 2,000 to 5,000. That's 3,000 gold and one gem times two. So it would be 6,000 gold and two gems in order to upgrade a giant to a titan. That's just too much. It's just too much. So uh, it's definitely in our best interest to upgrade cloud castles more then have one great cloud castle and do some other stuff there. Uh, red is being weird. I hope that they don't land near my main castle. Orange continues to be big and scary, which I mean, hey, they are. They're big and scary. They've earned it too. After they defeated me, I think that they have earned it. I am going to get this red tower here. Um, going to be pretty costly. We can't trade the ore, but we can trade everything else. Yeah, something like that, and probably something like that. And then my hope is, is that I can be just out, of, just in range with Erica, to 
to go and grab this castle on day one before Jim can pick up more sorceresses. Let's let's see right here. If we're right here, uh, we might be able to get all the way over here in one go next time. Let's wait and find out. Uh, it's day six, so there's no rush. We don't have to hurt ourselves trying to make that happen. Um, let's do one more hero chain. So we got a six speed set of creatures there. Balagar needs to actually eliminate peasants and archers. They just don't matter. As he picks up, picks up the windmill, and then his job is going to be to be the second leg of the journey, moving north. Mandigal is going to be maybe the third leg. Um, I do want Dimitri to be involved in this, but I also want to pick up some of these freebies. Let's see how that goes. And I guess we have Kilburn here. Lord Kilburn can be the last leg of the journey. And we are going to use these big, long hero chains to defeat our enemies. More support. I think that Erica can probably defeat Jem, but because I don't know, I'm very hesitant to like find out. We can go to right here. Let's have Falagar go to right there. Falagar should be able to get to right about there. Let's have Mandigal. Hmm. Let's have Mandigal wait right here. We're gonna have another hero. Our little Kalindra. Because she's got the six speed troops. Uh, Kalindra is going to be the second leg of the journey for Falagar. From here to here. And that gives Dimitri some time and space to do whatever else he wants to do. And then Lord Kilburn, I'm just going to have him take one more step up. Because he should be able to get pretty far up the way. Unless Jem attacks him, in which case it's all it's all for naught. Okay. Um, pick up our one Phoenix. We've got all of our spell points. I think that we're going to split the Titans. So that way we can be less prone to getting multiple bits of damage. And that mass curse is going to be super good against these sorceress troops if they decide to attack us. Let's see what happens here. Okay. And instead they go west, which is not bad. That's pretty reasonable. Red dragon growth is up five. And so let's pick up three more phoenixes. Might as well pick up greater druids. Might as well pick up unicorns. And because we know that this uh, hero chain is already going to work, this is going to be great. We're going to pick up three more titans immediately. Go from here to here to here. From here to here, ah, you see where we're going with this? From here to here, from here to here. Sure, why not? Just because I clicked on the wrong guy. And then Lord Kilburn is going to be the one to bring these Titans in for the very final leg of this journey. And that is how you get all these Titans from here over, what is that? probably 76,000 movement points or more so that we can bring to bear our full strength, our full army here against Jim. She has no chance. Let's go from there. Okay. And it's a glorious victory. And we actually defeat her without actually um, having her run. Let's make sure that we can win this fight ourselves anyway. I could just accept these losses and maybe I should because um, I feel like this is going to be a very, very long scenario. And so if it's going to be very, very long, I would hate to waste time on fights that are won but I think it's worthwhile. I do, I think I think it's worthwhile. It's worth my time anyway. Uh, Phoenixes from 11 down to eight, eight down to six. Gonna lose two unicorns there. If I'd kept the unicorns back, I wouldn't lose any troops at all this fight. It. I don't think that really concerns me too much though. Next, next spell. I am going to do the mass curse. No, we're going to do one blind. That's enough dwarves that I just don't want to have to deal with them later. Um, in the event that that's what keeps them from running, I would like to have given myself the very, very best chance to win here. So we're going to 
obliterate these phoenixes. We're going to hope that we can blind these unicorns with ours. We cannot. Oh, and uh, they're going to turn and they're actually going to try and kill my phoenixes. They do. They're going to kill one. So down to three phoenixes there. The slow has worn off. 70 hit points. Uh, I don't have a single damage spell that'll do 60. So then let's just kill here. One more blind. And then from here, I think that we can prevent the enemy from running. Uh, we just have to make sure that we kill these dwarves all in one go. Oh wait, they're actually awake. Whoops. Let's use one more blind just to make sure. 29 down to 20, 20 down to 17, 17 down to 10. And then that's it. So well, we did take more losses, but you know, rather than just hit accept, I, I would prefer to fight these fights where I can, especially when they're big fights, especially when that was Erica Slayer, because there is some challenge in preventing the enemy from running. And so did I do worse than the AI did? Absolutely. Oh, that wasn't her. That was Terra Slayer. That was Gem we fought. Oh man. For some reason, I thought that that was us beating our sister. Darn. Okay. As far as gems go, we have two gem mines. Are there any other gem mines? I think that it's worth it to get one of these other heroes to the north so we can figure out where stuff is. Let's just plan this out. Let's have it be... Dimitri heading east and everybody else supporting, searching around in that area. Okay, so that was one thing that we were definitely concerned about. I don't love to have these enemies behind me, but especially because it's Celia and she's not that tough, Wilfrey is about to unload upon her. We are going to spend the gold to get all these champions. We're going to spend the time to get all these rangers. Um, we're even going to upgrade the armory so that way we can get the master swordsmen so we don't have to upgrade them later. Oh, and because there's the Freeman's Foundries, we might as well just pick up the pikemen. We are going to wait on the paladin, so that's a really expensive upgrade. So we're going to accept these losses. Wilfrey doesn't care. But we're going to give him the expert wisdom, and he's going to go back to sleep. Otherwise, water wheel, hopefully five gems there. Balagar's picking up a thousand gold there. Dimitri. I'm going to have Dimitri go into this area. I, I just feel like there's something up there. What it is, I don't know, but I feel like there is something up there. Um, we're going to try and maintain this hero chain a little bit. We're just going to have everybody kind of more or less in their waiting positions as we defeat Terra. And we shall, because seven Titans is just too much. And, and folks, I think that um, as we defeat Green Player, Green Player has been vanquished, um, I think that we're going to secure this area. We are going to avenge the loss to Dennis, and then we are going to um, leave Red for a, a, a later time. Um, I think that because we're specifically not on stream now, it actually uh, doesn't hurt my heart too much to try and finish off the scenario uh, for now, and then we'll come back and we'll, we'll complete this a little bit later. Uh, just since, again, we're having some of those technical difficulties. Not making great use of our heroes right now. Again, let's just reset this hero chain. And let's remember that we are trying to get our additional titans in multiple places. Again, heavy cost to gems. Do we have a marketplace everywhere we need to? I think that it maxes out at like 10 marketplaces. I think that more than 10 marketplaces isn't going to help you. I think it's 10 marketplaces. There's there's a there's a lower limit. And I think that we're there. But just in case we're not, let's just add one more marketplace for 500 gold. It's not going to hurt my heart too much. Okay. So month two, week two, day two. Red is cruising around. Orange, I, I tell you what, I feel like I've got to avenge this loss to Orange. I really just have to. And I think I can. Even though they've got Phoenixes, I don't think that's going to be enough to stop me. There's no troops here. Green that we just defeated, they purchased all these out. And this time, I'm going to be a better, smarter champion of my forces. Not to mention, we're going to have three extra Phoenixes. Um, and we're going to find a way to defeat Dennis this time. We're going to do this much better than before. Okay. Uh, everybody else is more or less where they ought to be. 
probably to like right here, to there, to there. Dimitri needs to continue to look because there's a break in the hills here. Let's see what's up there. Everybody else is ready to go. You're ready to go. You're ready to go. Ready to go. And for some reason, Lord Kilburn has these very, very slow troops. Okay. Now remember, all of this is, is going well for us, but this is not the ultimate victory. We still have much more to do in this scenario. Um, we've explored just the southern tip. We've explored less than... I think that we're probably just about at 25% of the map. Probably just about at 25% of the map. That means that there's a lot of map left to be played. Um, and I'm excited just to see where this goes. Rather than... This is a this is a very important choice. Knowing how this fight is going to play out. Knowing that we're probably going to be using curses and shields and things like that. I think we're going to do the one mass shield. And because we're going to do the mass shield... I think that it's going to be best for me to actually split up my titans. I do. So we're going to do the mass shield. It says we lose. I disagree. I know that he's tough, but he's not tougher than me. So let's make this happen. Okay. So first and foremost, mass shield. That's going to last for two turns. Wow, I've really got to get some spell power under my belt. And then I'm not worried about any of these other troops so much. I'm going to attack unicorns. I'm going to let the phoenixes take the first hit from these elves. By the way, the, one of the very best things that could have happened just happened. And that is, is that these uh, elves, yeah, sure, they totally just picked up the shield. But they also lost the wall. They lost the wall. And because they lost the wall, we're going to have a straight shot with these titans. Not with these titans just yet, but with those other titans, we're going to have a shot. But we can do some pretty nifty stuff. I am going to use this one greater druid to sit right here because I don't want the unicorns or the dwarves to come out and bother my titans at all. I do not want that. I'm just not going to allow it. So uh, we're going to continue on here. Take out the phoenixes. It makes more sense to me to take out phoenixes at this time. In large part because wasting the damage on the shielded elves just doesn't feel like the play. We've already got the shield up. Mass curse, even just a basic curse would be useful for long-term damage. If we play the game of blind, here's what we can do. All right, we've got enough. We got enough spell points, and I'm not worried about any of these other troops. Let's just do this. We're gonna blind, and then break the blind so that they don't get their turn back. And I don't care what spells the enemy casts here. I just don't care. We're gonna obliterate all the other troops. We're gonna simplify this fight, and we're gonna use our advantage with the blinds to make this fight go the way I want it to. We're still going to get damage down. It's just not going very, very fast. The seal skin's an excellent choice. I think that's uh, very, very wise of them. Uh, one set of titans breaks the blind. One set of titans kills everybody else. And this is where having the flexibility and having two sets of titans instead of one does make a big difference. And I don't care about the damage from the walls. I just don't think it's going to be that useful. Uh, we got to kill the dwarves anyway. I just don't want them to have an additional chance. I think that the elves get to go now, actually. I should have left those two elves alive. Dang, I should have left those two elves alive, actually. Oh, my word. I didn't even think about it, but I should have, because um, what's happened now is now I've got the slower troops. I now have the slower troops. Very interesting how that works. Okay. Um, whoever goes last in combat... If there's a tie between six speed creatures, then it's going to be whoever has the slower creatures, they're going to have to go second in the next round. So leaving two dwarves actually was pretty critically important to that strategy that I was just using. Um, and so now the blind lock is not going to work. It's not going to work. What I can do is I can blind now. And because we do... We have no melee penalty. I can blind and I can walk up with all my troops and then I can just do full damage on the melee. Let's do that. Let's do that. Um, and, and because we have the slower troops, we do have to use the blind now. It's only going to last for two turns. So it's basically only going to effectively last for one turn. Let's go to here. Let's go to here. And the turrets are still going to fire at the end of this turn here. 
because you don't get to just miss your turn. Oh wait, never mind. We've already broken through. That's good. And I'm gonna cast disrupting ray. 17, 21. We're already doing bonus damage anyway. That doesn't really matter to me. Let's let's start resurrecting true some of these titans. We bring one back. That's gonna be the titan that we try and keep not taking major damage. So we're gonna have them sit right here for now. Skip and here. Okay. Yeah, he's still he's still a little bit feisty. Oh, you are kidding me. What a good time for good morale. What a jerk. My word. Alrighty, and now I don't even care. Um Ouch. We're gonna do one more blind. This feels so bad, but I'm gonna have to do one more blind because I want to move my troops up and then start to attack. And that's gonna give me the opportunity to do one more bit of spells. If I do the Disrupting Ray, we're gonna get rid of a couple more of their points. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be doing some more bonus damage. I think with only four Titans though, that's not nearly so good. A major disabling spell, like a long-term disabling spell? Disrupting Ray is that spell. I think that's it. I think it's the Disrupting Ray. Now from here, we just have to fight this out. This feels so bad, but it is what it is. If I actually skip for one more turn, do I want to break the blind now, or do I want to get myself one turn closer to that Steel Skin wearing off? I think that because he has six spell points left, I actually want to break the blind now, so that next turn he'll go first. I'm going to get to it go first next time because we have even speed creatures. Whatever. This is how we're going to do it. Oh my goodness. Look at that. The shield. It, it makes sense if I wasn't right on top of your face, but I am. So you are officially now out of spell points. I got one spell point. I'm out of spell points. You're out of spell points, but you're doing 30 damage on the retaliation now. And the elves are just going to crumble. 66. We may lose one more Titan. We're down to 47 hit points. There's another 35 of that. There goes one more Titan. We are down to three Titans left. There's 50 Elves here. We're killing three to four here. We're killing a couple here. Yeah, this is this is no chance. No chance. Uh, so the Elves are going to go down. And I'm thrilled for it. 25 left. 217 hit points on this top stack. 188 on the stack of two here. Down to 21. Even with the good luck, there's no chance. There's 13 down to 10 on these Grand Elves left. Three to four more go down. We get the good morale. And folks, um, ultimately, that was a, a struggle. And I thought we would actually fight that fight even better than we did before. But thankfully, we were able to use a couple of these little tips and tricks. Uh, and we were able to fight that fight better than I think we otherwise could have. Um, I mean, we turned what the AI thought was a loss into a victory. That's a, that's a big bonus. Uh, everything else, we'll take it from there. Um, it's fine. It's fine. I'm still going to go back, though. I feel like I feel like that other fight was was winnable still. Was that other fight winnable? I think it was. I think it was. I know that I know that he fought one other fight between uh, this fight and the last fight. I know that I this fight would have been a loss. Otherwise. I feel like it could have been winnable. I feel like I still messed it up. Maybe maybe I could have at least taken down another 50 of the Grand Elves if my strategy had been a little bit more correct in that first fight. But here in the second fight, I'm still happy with the way that we fought that. Very, very messy. And, and one of the biggest things would have actually been to have had one additional spell power. One additional spell power would have made a world of difference in so many ways. Uh, the blinds would have lasted for one more turn. Um, the, the shields would have lasted for one more turn. It was really not a small thing. So this golden bow is a massive pickup. If you're using Titans and we don't have to worry about the uh, range penalty, that's excellent. Endless Court of Wood, fine. Ammo Cart, sure, why not? Book of the Elements, we already got that. Elemental Ring, okay, great, great. Pendant of Death, kind of bad. Skull Cap, not a bad spell, especially when we got the Paralyzed. And I think, yes, that's perfect. We actually have one slot left, and so I know for sure that I didn't waste any of these slots. We're going to immediately dump this Pendant of Death. We're going to uh, dump these Books of the Elements and the Elemental Ring, and probably the Gold and the Wood off to another hero. Um, just in case we need it later, but the skull cap is a big pickup. The golden bow is massive, and and overall, uh, folks, this has been uh, a struggle. But I think that we've secured this area, minus the fact that we still have red, and red we know has packs and packs of bone dragons. There's still a lot left of this scenario to play, but for now, we're gonna call it until next time.